Father, thank you so much. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you because it's always a joy and a privilege to stand before your people and to share what you have laid upon my heart. And I thank you so much for Battersea Chapel. Thank you for what you're doing in this house. And thank you for what you will yet do this morning and always. As I open my mouth, fill it. Every word that you intend for your sons and daughters to hear, Father, speak those words through my mouth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praises. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So the topic God has given me is touched by his grace. Touched by his grace. And my prayer is that each one of us will have an experience of his grace. And that was why I was particularly interested in that hymn that was sung, Be Still, the last verse of it. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. And I'm like, oh wow, this is interesting. And it says, no work too hard for him. You will soon find out when you hear the rest of what I have to say. In faith, receive from him. I don't know who chose that hymn, but you're clearly walking in the spirit. Whoever chose that hymn. For the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Be still. And the message God has given me is touched by his grace. And the text is Mark 5. 25 to 33. And this is the words, the story of the woman with the issue of blood. How many people have heard that story before? Many of us, I'm sure, can say it, you know, all by heart, because we've had it preached about, talked about so many times. And I'm going to read an account of what happened to her. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and spent and suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue has gone out of him, turned about, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Verse 31, and his disciples said unto him, 
Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that has done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. I know this message is for at least one person in this congregation. And if that's you, you should be celebrating. If that's you, you should be rejoicing. Because there's, there's, a, there's a saying that when God wants to help a man, he will send a word. Because a word is all you and I need to transition us from where we are to the places that we're trusting God to be. Does that make sense? You just need a word. And it has to be the right word. And I'm trusting God that these words will mingle with faith in your heart this morning. It would encourage you, it would charge you, and it will bring you to the place of the realization of the things God has in store for you. Because God has great things in store for us as his children. I'm sure you've heard um, the meaning of the word grace, God's unmerited favor. So if anyone's saying to you, you have to deserve it, that is not grace. If you deserve it, it is called reward. Like what you get when you go and work. So when your employers give you your pay package, you don't, go, you don't prostrate before them and say thank you. Does anyone do that? Why don't you do that? Because you've earned it. But grace is different. It's God's unmerited favor. And I'm trusting him that he will release grace upon you, just like he did for this woman. Um, one of the acronyms for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. So Christ has already paid the expense. Is God's riches at Christ's expense. And I had a question, who really touched who? Because the text says the woman touched the Lord Jesus. But I believe it isn't just the woman who touched her, because she could touch him, just like other people were touching him, and nothing would have happened if he didn't touch her in return. So he saw something in return in, in, in her life and made him to reciprocate by touching her, and that's why she got her healing. So I believe it was both ways. And that song that we sang, it says, no work too hard for him. In faith, did you hear what he said? In faith, receive. So as I'm talking, please let your faith come alive. Let your faith come alive. Trust and believe in the Lord. Let your faith come alive. Now, we're going to examine a few things about this woman. And I'm hoping that as I talk through her story, you'll be able to tap into something and learn a lesson or two from her. So the first thing we are told that she was referred to as a certain woman. Now that's good news. So that means you can put your name there regarding whatever you're going through. You can add your name. It just said a certain woman, so it could be anyone. And it means that anyone who has faith can receive of the Lord. So if you have faith this morning, you can receive of the Lord. Even if your faith is itty bitty, you know, tiny, you can still receive from the Lord. So be encouraged. And so look at your neighbor, say smile. Find a neighbor and then smile and smile and smile. Look at them, say smile. God is on the throne and he's here for you. Okay, all right. I felt to chip that in, praise God. Now, the next thing we're told is that she had an issue of blood for how many years? How many years? 12 years. That's an awful long time. So she must have been really frail. She must have been very sickly. And she must have been very tired. Um, we're told in Leviticus 17.11. Leviticus 17.11. And I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. And it says, For the life of the body is in its blood, I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for life that makes purification. The life of the flesh, the Bible tells us, is in the blood. So every time, I mean, I don't know how fast it takes a human body to reproduce blood. But this woman was constantly bleeding. So that means life was slowly slipping out of her. I don't know how long she would have lived if she didn't have an encounter with the Lord Jesus. After 12 years of bleeding, ladies, three, five days of bleeding, we're crying, we're screaming, 
12 years of it. That's an awful long time. Um, so we're told that this problem lasted so long. And then we're also told to make matters worse, she suffered many things from many physicians. She suffered many things. The Bible tells us in Psalm 60, verse 11, the American Standard Version reads, give us help against the adversary, for vain is the help of man. I'm sure this woman knew the scripture well. Vain is the help of man. Um, she perhaps became the guinea pig. You know, I don't know if anyone has ever been a guinea pig for any experimental drug. It's not a good place to be. So they were practicing on her. They were giving her false hope, empty promises. For 12 years, just imagine that. She must have had her hopes raised and dashed for so long. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, Jeremiah 17, 9, in the New Living Translation, the human heart is most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? She would have endured one disappointment after the other. Has anyone ever been disappointed? You had your hopes raised. They gave you the promise. It was a sure, like some people say, it was a sure banger. It couldn't fail, but it did. And that was this woman's story. I can imagine the various concussions she would have had to swallow. Someone say, okay, yes, it worked for Sister Rose. So it should work for you. And then she swallows it. It worked for Sister Ruth. It should work for you. Then swallow it. Can you imagine? And then she keeps swallowing it. You know, maybe worst case scenario, she has diarrhea. But at the end of the day, the bleeding doesn't stop. And I'm sure many of us have been there where you're in a challenge, or maybe you're there right now in a situation, and people are making promises, and they're telling you it should work, but it's not working. And you're banging your head wondering, why isn't it working? And you're having your hopes dashed and disappointed. Uh, disappointed. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. I dare say some of those physicians know it wasn't going to work. They just wanted to take our money and make a kill out of it. And that's the human heart. The Bible says the human heart is wicked and desperately wicked. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. Um, as I said earlier, it's really tough. I mean, uh, the gentleman in the house perhaps may not understand this, but the, lady for, the ladies in the house will understand how challenging it is to have your menstrual cycle. Some people have it for three to five days, some seven days, a month. Even that is challenging not to talk of not having it for 12 years. So we're talking about 12 months, consecutive, not even five, three, day, three to five days in a month, but every single day she was bleeding, she was hemorrhaging, and that's a hard place to be. Now, when a person is sick and they go for treatment, one of three things can happen. Your situation may remain the same, you may get better, and I pray that we do get better in Jesus' name, amen? amen? Or the situation could worsen. What was it for this woman? It was the last thing I said. Her situation didn't stay the same. Her situation didn't improve, but actually, it was getting worse. And that is really concerning. So maybe you're at that place. You've tried everything, and the situation is getting worse. And you're wondering, how bad is it going to get before this whole thing blows up? But I've got good news for you. The same way this woman touched the grace of God, you will touch God's grace. How many people are trusting God for a miracle of whatever sort? Just wave at me. So I'm, I'm sure I'm in, the right, I'm in the right church. Just wave, just wave. Whatever. Maybe a healing miracle, a financial miracle, job miracle, marriage miracle. I don't know what you're trusting God for. Yeah. So that means you're in the right place this morning. So as I'm talking, please be encouraged. Okay? So her situation worsened. Now, this woman spent all she had in pursuit of a cure. So it wasn't just her health that was, that was deteriorating. Her money, her bank balance was depleting to the point that she had no more money. Um, she was, um, I don't know how wealthy she was when this whole process started, but by the time we were reading this text, she was broke. She was penniless. She had run out of money. 
And one of the things God laid on my heart was, even if a legitimate solution now came that required money, guess what? She doesn't have any money to pay for it because she spent all her living. She spent everything she had looking for a solution. That's something else we get to know about this woman. And then we also know that according to the law of that time, she would have been declared ceremonially unclean. Did you know that? How many people knew that? So ladies, we walk into church when we have it on. In those days, you wouldn't. So let me read this account. Leviticus 15, 25 to 27, also in the New Living Translation. And it says, if a woman has a flow of blood for many days that is unrelated to her menstrual period, or if the blood continues beyond the normal period, she is ceremonially unclean. As during her menstrual period, the woman will be unclean as long as the discharge continues. Any bed she lies on and any object she sits on during that time will be unclean, just as during her normal menstrual period. If any of you touch these things, you will be ceremonially unclean. You must wash your clothes and, be ba and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until the evening. So guess what? This woman was sick for 12 years. She is ostracized from the church. She is ostracized from friends. Because this, this is the way it works. The woman herself is unclean. She remains unclean. Anyone who touches her will be unclean. So imagine, you, <laughs> you want to, you meet a friend, you want to hug them, they are going to run from you because they have to declare themselves unclean and then go to the priest and then become clean and become... So basically, everyone will be running from her, just like you run away from a leper. That was how bad it was. And maybe, you have a, maybe your situation is like that, that people run away from you. I've known some people, um, their financial situation is so bad. When they're coming and people that know them see them, you know, and they're approaching them, they cross over to the other side. Why? Because they know they might ask them for money or ask them for a helping hand. So people start to avoid them. So maybe that's your story. Maybe it's so bad that people don't want to know, they don't want to make it their business, and you're left all alone. She was ostracized. People treated her like she had a plague. Now, do you think this woman would smell nice? I doubt it. Three to five days a month, I know how difficult it is for us as women. Not to now talk of 12 years, she wouldn't smell nice. I'm sure at some point she'll be tired of going out. What kind of garment do you think she would have been wearing? Would she wear white? Would she wear bright colored clothes? I doubt it. She probably dressed like a mourner, wearing black, for the fear of having her garment stained. Now I'm painting a picture so you can see what this woman had to go through. Yeah? And I hope I'm making sense as we go along. And then the sixth thing I wanted to say about this woman, she had run out of options. She ran out of options. You have to get to that point where you run, out, you run out of options for you to qualify for a miracle. When you still have plan B, oh, okay, I still have that doctor in India. I still have that. I mean, that's where everybody goes to now, India for treatment. And I'm not saying don't go there, but let's, let's receive a touch of grace today. Amen? There was no more plan B for her. And then the next thing we are told is that she was thrown a lifeline. What was that lifeline? She heard about Jesus. And you are in church this morning. You've heard about him as we sang the song. You've heard about him as Pastor Bayo came and gave us a talk. You hear about him on TV, you hear about him. That's a lifeline that you and I must do something about. She heard about all the miracles that he had done. And when you are going through a challenge, what you hear is really important. And that's why you must 
do everything possible to cover your air gates. I remember during the pandemic, at some point I had to turn off all these notifications because it was so bad. You know, 30,000 are dying. Um, they are digging graves in um, Excel. They are expecting thousands, millions of people. It was so bad that hearing that alone was causing, you know, one's heart to palpitate. Was it just me? After a while, I had to just stop listening to the news. It was so bad. Because faith comes by hearing, and fear also comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing God's word, which is what we talk about in church. And fear also comes by hearing. Hearing the negative news, hearing the negative. They spend so much time hearing the word of God, because that's how faith will be built up. This woman was thrown a lifeline. She heard about Jesus. She heard about his power to heal. She heard about his power to deliver. She heard, and that's why, can I implore you, church, spend more time in the word. You will discover that faith will be built up and fear will be kicked out. It's okay to stand before God and say, God, please help me to overcome fear. But the one assured way to overcome fear is to fill in your life with the word of God. So be friends with your Bible. Pick up your Bible, shake up the dust, go through the pages of the Bible, find out what the promises of God are for you. You know, I have um, promise cards. So basically when I'm reading the Bible and I come across any promise of God, I write it down. So one of such promise is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So what's the promise? I shall not want. Why? Because he's my shepherd. So if he's truly my shepherd, then I should not be in want. Does that make sense? So as you're going to the Bible, write those promises down. And you can go to the bank with those promises. Because God says, not a jot or a tittle of his word will fall down or fulfilled. God, you know, the Bible says, he honors his words above his name. So this woman heard. And the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. So what he did, you know, we sing this song, if he did it before, he will do it again. Same God right now. Same God back then. Yeah? Or same God back then. Same God right now. He's the same God. The same power. The same ability. So we read in the scriptures how he helped, how he healed, how he delivered, how he rescued. He can do the same thing again. That's the lifeline he's throwing us. But if you don't know the promises, how are you going to receive it? So open the pages of your Bible, read it, find out what he's done before. When you come across good lawyers, do you know what they do when they have a tough case? They go to the books. They're looking for a precedence. Did we have a case like this before? 20 years ago, 50 years ago, what was the outcome? And they use that as a basis for this current case. But if they never did the search to find out what happened 20 odd or 30 years ago, they won't have a press, they won't know there was a precedence already. That's what we do when we open up the pages of the Bible to find out. This woman heard that Jesus was around. She received a lifeline. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it wasn't just that she had faith. She was positioned to receive a touch. And I'm glad you are in church today. So if, for instance, Pastor Bayo says, oh, everyone in church, I'm going to lay hands on you and I'm going to minister healing to you. You're positioned for the touch. Some people may be at home saying, I'm going to watch it via Zoom. I'm going to watch it when it comes on YouTube. Are they positioned for a touch? No. So you have to put yourself in a place in close proximity to the Lord, to be able to receive. And the Bible tells us in James 4, 8, I'm going to read the A part of it. It says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. How do we draw close to God? Draw close to God in his word. God, draw close to God in worship. Draw close to God in prayer. That's how you position yourself. Sadly, there were so many people 
who were around the Lord Jesus at that time who were not positioned to receive anything. But this woman was positioned to receive. So you have to put yourself in close proximity to God to be able to receive from him. Don't stand afar off. Get close to God. You know, someone said, God doesn't bite. He's a loving father who is willing to interact with his children and let their lives receive a turn around. That's the kind of God he is. And then the other thing we also noticed about this woman, her faith was alive, but there was a problem, like I mentioned earlier. When lepers were when lepers are in public in those days, they cry, unclean, unclean. Why do they do so? So you don't come near them, so then you're not um, contaminated by touching them. So they cry, unclean, unclean. So ideally, this woman too should be crying, unclean, unclean. But do you think she was going to receive a miracle if she did that? Pastor Baya, what do you think? She can, is it unclean, unclean, and then she's approaching you. <laughs> she's not going to get anything. So she decided to take a risk. And that's what I'm imploring you to do. She stole a miracle. She thought, you know what? I'm going to put my life on the line. I don't know what's going to happen. But she was determined. Amen. You have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Does that make sense? If you're not sick and tired or being sick and tired, you will remain there. If you're not willing to take the bold step, she took the bold step. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to touch this man. I know I'm not supposed to do it, but I'm going to do it because I don't have, I've run out of options. You have to be at that point where you're desperate. You have to be at a point where you're desperate and say, God, this night I am not going to sleep. It's midnight. I'm going to pray for the next 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. I'm going to cry to you until I get a solution. I'm going to touch the hem of your garment like this woman did. I'm going to fast. I'm going to declare a fast until you answer me. Until we're that desperate. We want to receive what we want. And you have to be desperate. How many desperate people are in the house who are going to reach out to the Lord? Just wave at me. You're going to reach out to him. You're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to do whatever it takes. Someone said... It is only a madman that does something the same way repeatedly and expects a different result. Does that make sense? Only a madman, a wise man would say, I want something different, then I have to chip in something different. I have to sow something different. I have to do something different. That's how you're going to get something different. So maybe your prayer, you've been praying for one minute, or maybe no prayer. Then you up your prayer. Maybe the study of the word, no study of the word, or maybe just one verse, up it. Your fast, maybe zero fast, or maybe little fast, up it. And you're believing God that as you're making these changes, something new will happen, something different would happen. She didn't make any announcement. She made no request. I'm sure there were so many things going on. Shame, fear, a horrible combination. But she threw caution to the wind and said, you know what, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm not going to stop until I get what I get, what I want. Where did she get the idea of touching Jesus' garment from? Now, all of us know about it. So if I said, oh, we're going to reach out and touch the hem of his garment, We've heard it before, but in her case, it never been done. So my prayer for us today, that God will give us divine insight. Everybody say, divine insight. Divine insight. Loud and clear, divine insight. divine insight. I pray God will give us divine insight, divine solution to whatever that challenge may be. And I like what it reads in Daniel 2, 21 to 22. He says he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to them that no understanding. He revealeth deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. So God will reveal to you 
It's a good prayer that we're going to pray shortly. I pray God will give us divine insights in Jesus' name. Where did she get the strength from to push to the crowd? Remember, this woman had been bleeding for 12 years, so she would have been frail. But through determination, she mustered enough strength. And Isaiah 40, verse 29, the Amplified Version says, He gives strength to the weary, and to him that has no might, he increases power. I pray God will give you strength, strength to carry on. You will not give up, you will not quit, you will not be tired. You will push on until you get to your mark in the name of Jesus. Amen. Where did she get the courage from? Proverbs 28, verse 1, Amplified Version, says the wicked flee when no man pursues them, but the righteous are as bold as lion. We have to be bold, bold to grab what it is that we require of the Lord. God will give us courage in Jesus' name. She took a huge risk. The journey of faith that she took was a risky one, but she took it nonetheless. And the Bible tells us in Luke 1, 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Going back to that hymn that we said, that we sang, it says, no work too hard for him. It doesn't matter how bad that situation is. And I've taken my time to paint a picture of this woman's life so you can see how bad it was. So some of you may be saying, my case is worse, it doesn't matter. No work, I mean, you all sang it this morning, no work too hard for him. Everybody say that, no work. Say it loud and clear, no work. No work too hard for him. In faith, I will receive from him. That's what we sang. Say it loud and clear. In faith, I will receive from him. Yeah. No work too hard for him. Look at the picture I painted of this woman's story. As bad as it was, all she needed was just one touch. She didn't have to go and come back again. No. Just one touch. And they all ended. And there and then, she knew she had received the miracle. Even Christ attests to it that something, some virtue had departed from him. Psalm 113 verse 5 and 8 says, Who is like, 5 to 8 says, Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with the princes, even the princes of his people. God can do it. God can do it. God is still in the business of making his children experience a turnaround for good. How many people are trusting the Lord for a turnaround for good? Let's rise. Is your story similar to this woman's story? Or perhaps you feel it is worse. Have you had bouts of disappointment just like this woman? And people and organizations have made you empty promises. Have your hopes been dashed as well? Have you spent so much time yet no solution in sight? Do you feel like life is being drained from you? Do you feel like there's no one to cry to? Is the situation worsening by the day? Have you run out of options? Let's rise. Everyone, please stand if you can. If you can't, it's okay to sit. But if you can, please stand. The good news is that God is throwing you a lifeline as well. And his grace is available for you. All you need to do is call upon him. And all you need to do is hand over the steering wheel of your life to him. Don't leave him in the trunk. Bring him to the driver's side and give him control of the steering wheel of your life. Remember, God's riches are at Christ's expense. Jesus Christ has already paid the expense for your healing and your deliverance. So the first prayer I'd like for us to pray today is that of thanksgiving. Thank God for sending you his word. How many people have been encouraged? 
How many people have been encouraged? Truthfully, you've been encouraged. So thank God. Bow your heads and just say, Father, thank you for sending me your word. Thank you for sending me your word. Thank you, Lord, for sending me your word. Thank you for reminding me, Lord, that no work is too hard for you. Thank you for reminding me that in faith I can receive from you. Thank you, Lord, for overcoming fear in my life. If you're having bouts of fear, the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Say, Father, I receive the spirit of power. I receive the spirit of love and a sound mind. You have not given me the spirit of fear. I receive, I walk by faith, O oh God. Father, let faith be stirred up in me as a result of the words I have heard. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what doors have been opened. To ask God for mercy. Maybe you've done something and the door has been opened. You know, the Bible says um, when there's a crack in the wall, that's when the serpent bites. It says when the hedge is broken, has the hedge been broken by virtue of one thing you've done or the other in the past? Ask God for mercy. Everyone lift up your voice and say, Father, have mercy upon me, O Lord. Have mercy upon me. Ask God for his mercy. Ask God for his mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I don't know what that situation is. It could be a health challenge, a finance challenge, a business challenge, whatever. Say, God, have mercy upon me. Whatever I have done to contribute to this challenge, to open the door to the enemy, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Pardon, pardon, and forgive me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We're going to ask for divine insight. I don't know where that woman got the inspiration to do what she did, but I know clearly God was on her matter. Ask God, say, God, give me divine insight. Give me divine solution. Open up my heart, open up my mind to see the solution to this challenge I'm faced with. And mention that challenge to the Lord. Say, God, I'm going to do this. I don't have a clue how to come out of it. But you gave this woman divine wisdom, a solution. She heard about Jesus and you told her exactly what to do. I believe, I believe you spoke to her. I believe you spoke to her. I believe you spoke to her. Speak to me, Lord. Give me divine insight as well. Tell me what to do, Lord, and guide me in the doing of it. Give me boldness. Give me courage to take that step, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ask God for supernatural strength. Ask God, if we don't quit, ah, if we don't quit, then God, no, you cannot afford to quit. Lift up your voice and say, God, strengthen me. Strengthen me. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. We cannot quit. We cannot give up. Ask God for strength to carry on fighting. Ask God for strength to carry on fighting. Some people, when they receive a negative diagnosis, the strength to fight goes. When the strength to fight goes, the situation worsens. But lift up your voice and say, God, give me the fortitude. Give me the strength to keep going on. No matter what I've heard, let faith rise in me as I go through the word, as I go through your promises. Strengthen me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Grant me supernatural strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ask God for courage. Lord, give me courage. You gave this woman courage. Grant me courage, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and stretch it to him and say, Father, I receive a touch of grace. I receive a touch of grace. I don't know what your situation is, but tell God. Tell God he's listening. Tell God, tell God. If you don't want anyone next to you to hear about it, just whisper it to him. But please do not leave this auditorium today without telling God what our situation is. And I'm just going to stand and agree with you. Because the Bible says, whatsoever two or three shall agree as touching here on earth, it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. And so, Lord, your children are lifting up their voices and they're crying to you and telling you as it is. And they're telling you what the situation is. And they're telling you what those challenges are. Father, hear from heaven. Jehovah, hear from heaven. Lord Jesus, hear from heaven. Let there be a divine visitation. You touched upon this woman. She reached out to touch you. Our hands are lifted. Touch us, O oh God. 
Give us a touch of grace, O oh God, that will transform our lives. Let testimonies follow these prayers. Lord, is it a healing? Send a word of healing. By your stripes, your daughters, your sons are healed. Is it financial? Father Jehovah, the power to get wealth released upon your children. Lord, let the floodgates of heaven be open upon our lives in the name of Jesus. I don't know what that need is. Is it academical? Lord Jehovah, give your children wisdom, knowledge, understanding, more than the Asian, more than their teachers. In the name of Jesus, whatever the situation is, we have been told in the words of the song, no work too hard for you. We have been told in the pages of the Bible, with you, God, all things are possible. With you, God, all things are possible. Every seemingly impossible situation that has presented itself to your sons and daughters here, Lord, begin to arrest in the name of Jesus. Begin to pull down those walls. Begin to bring down those mountains. In the name of Jesus, you said that we have faith as little as a mustard seed. We will say to this mountain, be removed and cast yonder. Lord, I declare every mountain of opposition in the lives of your sons and daughters here. Let it become a plain in the name of Jesus as they're lifting up their voices in faith, Lord. Arise, O oh God, and show yourself strong, God. Arise, O oh God. You said, be still and know that I am God, King of glory. We ask, O oh God, for the grace to be still and know that you are God. I declare that grace upon the life of your sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Now lift up your voice and say, thank you, Lord. Because you've heard, you have answered, you've done it. Sing praises to God like you really know he's done it. Sing praises, sing praises, sing praises. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. The things God has prepared for those who love him. You love God, he loves you. Lift up your voices. The Bible says he called those things that be not as though they are. And so we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the change. Thank you for the turnaround. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the healings. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for your hand upon us. Thank you for the touch of grace. Thank you, Lord, that those age-old problems, they are coming to an end. Thank you, Lord, because only you are the doer of it. Thank you, Lord, because you've done it. Thank you, Lord, because you've done it. Thank you, Lord, because you are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are awesome. You are glorious. You are excellent. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega, the beginning and the ending of all things. So there's nothing about us that catches you unawares. You are all powerful. You are almighty. You are incredible. You are beautiful. You are excellent. You are glorious. Father, we bless your name in anticipation. But go ahead, lift up your voices. Praise him like you know it's done it. Praise him like you know he's done it. Because he has, because he has, because he has. Praise him like you know he's done it. He's incredible, Father. Thank you so much, God. We bless your name, oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can see everything turning around in our favor. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the finished work of Calvary. You said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. It is finished. That means the problems, the challenges, finished. You lay, you were hung upon the cross. You took that, you took the beatings. The Bible says, by your stripes, we are healed. So whatever area of our lives is ailing right now, by your stripes, we are made whole. By your stripes, we are made whole in our marriages, in our homes, in the lives of our children, in our ministries, in our finances, in our bodies, in our businesses, in our secular marketplaces. We are made whole because by your stripes, we are healed. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Look at your neighbor and congratulate them. Congratulate your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and congratulate them. Do you know why you're congratulating them? Because God has done it. Praise God.